Hi, I'm Stephen and welcome to Watch Out and I'm continuing my watchmaking journey by learning on these alarm clocks. I rebuilt one and so I'm going to have a go at this one. This one actually does have a fault. It came off eBay again. It was advertised as not running. It did actually run for a while when I got it, a couple of days, but now it doesn't seem to. It will just kind of run for a little bit and then just stop. So it's not especially attractive, but I thought that with this Commonwealth of Australia across here, it makes it a little bit interesting. So we'll have a look and see what we can find. So this is my first attempt at using hand levers. We'll see how we go, because these hands are pretty big, obviously. There's one. Hmm, that one's been a little bit more difficult. Might just. Oh gosh, he is tight. I should be able to do that one later anyway because the hour wheel will just come out. Okay, well, that seems to work. Okay, so now to get the movement out, I will just have to remove these off the back. Yeah, I don't think these have been off for a long time. The threads are all gummy. That one. There we go. Just a force fit on the back of that shaft is that one. So there we go. Oh, wow. Okay, it didn't actually pull the hand off, but it pulled the hour wheel out, so that's okay. Um, Partially pulled it off, I think, but we'll resolve that. Okay, here we are. Okay, so a couple of things. I'm going to leave this hour uh, hand on because I think if I try to get it off, I'm going to dam damage something. And we can see that the hour wheel is lovely and clean. So nothing's really going to be achieved by doing that. Also, you can see that the clock is now running. Um, I just gave it a bit of a spray here and there with um, contact cleaner, but I gave it a really good inspection. Couldn't actually see anything wrong with it mechanically. Basically what it was, was just due to a lack of, either a lack of lubrication and or kind of like being gummed up. There just wasn't enough power getting down the train to actually keep the balance oscillating. So it would just oscillate for a bit and then stop. So for example, you can probably see there's sort of like some dried up uh, grease around here. So basically, yeah, this is going to need to be stripped down, cleaned and re-lubricated and I think it should run beautifully when that is done. So firstly I'm going to remove the balance and I'll just do that by slacking off this um, little adjustment screw with this funny head arrangement.
Of course, what I should have done, so I've already made a blunder, this is why we're doing this, is this needs to come out, this should have come out first. And I knew that. There we are. Get it through this adjusting slot. I'll just move the slot that way. We'll make it a bit easier. And this is going to come through here. There we go. There we are. Balance out. See the kink right at the end from when it's been put in. Okay, I've got to let the power out of the mainspring now. And because it hadn't been running, it's almost fully wound. But I think if I do this, right, third hand in terms of the vices now there. That's better. I can just sort of ease this around. There, we can see the spring nicely spooling out now. Get all that power out of it. There we go, look at that. Yeah, no power in that now. So what I'm kind of hoping is that now that this is the, the second time that I've done this, I can be a lot better. The point is to develop some skills as I go along. So, This is interesting. Ooh. Okay, I've just noticed one difference from the one that I just pulled apart is that this um, bell seems to be secured in a different way. So the one that I did before, the bell was secured from up here, but this one, it's down the bottom. Oh, that's all right, doesn't matter. Also, it doesn't have flat washers under here like the other one did. So anyway, I think the next trick is to get the pallet fork out. Oops. There it is. Pallet fork is out. And now we just need to get this clip. difficult that way maybe take that off because it's in the way
Okay, that's out of the slot. So now just this one. Easy to do it this way. There. There we are, that's loose. Okay. We loosen this end. This part here, notice the spring goes behind the post. I made the mistake on the last one. I didn't have that spring in the right place. So that's that piece. And the clanger for the bell, that comes out. And we'll see if we can get out I think this is called the bell escape wheel or the alarm escape wheel. No, there's not quite enough clearance to get it out. All right, well, that can stay there for now. Come down the other end. Escape wheel, fourth wheel, third wheel, okay. So this shaft here is quite tight. What I'm going to have a go at is doing this. Yep, got it. So I held the shaft with the pliers and pushed up on the plate from below. Okay, that plate is free. Here's the spring for the alarm. It's pretty clean actually. Sorry, this, that's the spring for the clock, not for the alarm. This is the spring for the clock. Okay, so then there's this assembly here, which is held in place. So this is the uh, minute wheel. And this spring is held in place just by this clip, which just comes out like so. There are two slots in this shaft, and the clip goes in the bottom slot. Okay, so that's this assembly. You can just take that spring off, and I'm not sure whether this wheel will actually come off. I don't think it's going to. It's all right, it doesn't need to come off. So that's those. Now, how 
Oh, there's the alarm escape wheel that can come out. Now the thing that's got me a little bit confused is the bell arrangement is different to the last clock that I worked on. Okay, we can still get that wheel out like so, a little bit more fiddly. But yep, that spring is out now. And Yeah, it's actually riveted in. So there's no way that that bell is coming out. It's now held in by these two posts and those two posts are riveted in. So there we go. All right, and there's the center wheel. So yeah, we've got all the parts out of this thing now. Uh, we've done that a heck of a lot quicker than we did it the first time, so that's good. And I actually believe I know what all the parts are, so that's good too. So now we need to get them cleaned. Okay, so I'm now going to clean these parts. So I'm just using an ultrasonic cleaner. And what I'm doing is I've got water in the cleaner, but I'm just using that as a medium. Because then I've got these glass jars, and they've got ISO in them. So... This jar has actually got used ISO in it from last time and I've just got the, the springs in there and then I've got this little jar, it's got the parts in it. Um, so at the moment I've only got, I've only got one jar because um, the rest of them have got jam in them. It's funny, I looked on Amazon for jams for this purpose and I thought it was quite expensive for ja uh, jars, so I just bought a bunch of little jam jars from a uh, hotel um, wholesaler. So yeah, I've only eaten one of them so far. The rest have got jam in them. So um, I'll need to, I haven't got all the parts in here. I'll need to do some of, the, some of the other ones a little bit later on, but this is most of them. This cleaner will only run for 30 seconds. But the parts look pretty clean as it is, um, so yeah, they should come out pretty well. Just uh, while we're cleaning these parts, can I please encourage you to support my channel. Subscribing is so important, it's the best way you can support me if you want to see more of these videos. I've also got a Patreon, it's connected to my other channel. Go check out my other channel, it's Audio Nautica, and my Patreon is at patreon.com slash audio nautica. Love to see you over there. And also, if you're liking this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you've got some comments, I'd love to read your comments. Okay, so all of the parts are cleaned and dried. However, there's just a couple that have got a bit of rust on them. So this is the escape wheel. And yeah, you can see there's just some light surface rust in those teeth. So I'm just going to drop this in some evapor rust so that that is dealt with. There's also a little bit of surface rust on the bottom part of this is the third wheel, I believe. So it's not going to focus. There it is. A little bit of rust. And there was some rust on the uh, spindle as well. And these parts are big enough that I can actually deal with that mechanically. And I did that just with this little strip of wet and dry paper. Just wrap it around the shaft and then I just kind of rotate the shaft like so on the piece of wet and dry paper. But I can't do anything about that rust there. So that's going to go into the evapor rust as well. And so those are the last two parts that need to be cleaned up. And then we can start to put the clock back together. Okay guys, so these parts have been soaked in rust eater and now cleaned up. So I think we're in a position where we can start reassembling this clock. And again, I'm wearing finger cots, even though I don't think it's really necessary on a movement like this. But I just want to learn good practices, get used to working on things with finger cots on. So this is the, this is the cannon pinion here, which will be a friction fit but it's not like 
the cannon pinion in a watch so I don't have a means of removing that so I've left this on so what I need to do is just get some oil into this bearing and I think the way I did it last time it's kind of like this There we go. Yeah, I can see oil flowing into that. So I'll just give this a good spin. There we go. That's nice. Just make sure that's well oiled. And you might be able to see there's a blob of oil just on the plates so I'll just try to soak that up as best I can with some Rodico. Rodico is kind of like a uh, watchmaker's, well, it's like blue tack really. First thing to go in will be this, um, these parts which are to do with the alarm because you recall they were held in so this clip has this um, tab sticking out which goes through this hole and this is what actually alarms uh, enables and disables the alarm so this goes through here like so goes on the bottom slot The next best thing to do now will be to install these alarm springs. So this one sort of has to go underneath the bell. there come on oh there we go that's it now mm. yeah I think that's kind of looks right just making sure it's not fouled on anything that it shouldn't be remembering that it's really unwound yeah i think that's okay and then this one here And that's the bell that powers the the, the um, spring that powers the clock. Okay. So now this plate needs to go on and. Before I put that on, I just want to um, just put a little bit of lube in this this adjustment duver. I don't know what it's called, but this is what allows you to adjust the um, the hairspring, which will adjust the the speed that the clock runs at. So I'll just try to get this. It still feels quite stiff. Feels better. 
so it gets oil through it. Yeah, that feels good. Okay, so that goes around this way. So I'm just using um, Super Lube as the oil, it's a light machine oil. Because I really don't think it's necessary to use watch oil on a non-precision thing like this. So, There we go. Just tends to get caught up on the um, the pivots coming out of the springs because they've kind of like got two diameters. If that makes any sense, I hope it does. Um, now. Okay, one slight problem. You can see how this there's this tab poking down from the plate. I don't think I think the spring should be the other side of that. Like that. That's better. It's probably a good idea now just to whack on a couple of these nuts down this end, the opposite end to what I'm working, because this plate will tend to sort of want to rock. And then this way, it can't sort of rock back that way. So I'm going to want a bit of slack at this end. And I'm going to want to put the third and the fourth wheel in. So from memory, I think the big one was a third wheel. So let's see how we go. Let's give myself a little bit more space. Come on. There we go. I was just being a little bit recalcitrant going into the pivot and as long as it's in that one probably don't need to worry too much about the top one main thing is that I can verify that it is engaged with the center wheel So that's the main thing that I need to be able to see. I 
So now if we go for the fourth wheel, Fourth wheel is engaged with the third wheel and then the escape wheel goes this way. Let's see how we go getting this in. There we go. Look at that. So we can see that they are all engaged. Isn't that great? So I'm just going to whack these nuts in here now so that this doesn't go anywhere. Now we come down this end. Just need to get this spring sorted out a little bit more that goes in there that's mm. I don't like the way this spring is lying but I'm hoping that when I tighten it up it will sort itself out because this bit should be it should be on the other side of the, uh, let's, let's do this. Let's do it this way. Bring the whole thing up. That's better. Because it probably won't want to do it when it's under tension. I think I'll just leave that there for now. Hopefully it won't get in the way. Okay, so this little duver here is the um, alarm escape wheel. Uh, this kind of really is in the way, isn't it? You get down there. That seems to be a bit better. slacken these nuts off. We have a problem. I can't get any clearance from the um, the spring. So what I need to do is I'm actually, even though there's nothing holding the spring, there will be a point where it it won't have any power to undo itself, if that makes any sense. So I can, oops, so I can partly wind this up, that's better, there we go, to get it out of the way, yeah, that's the true, that's the trick, okay, that's all right, so it did unwind itself partly, but just this, this, this point, just here, where it won't unwind anymore, and it's now sort of sitting there. I've got enough of it out of the way to get it to sit where it's meant to sit. So I now have the room that I didn't have the room for before. So. Yeah, I think really this wheel should have gone in first. There we go. 
it's in. Now, the trick is, will I be able to get this clapper in? Oh, I did actually. Yeah, it worked. The clapper's got to go underneath the, um, the teeth for this alarm escape wheel. But it kind of easily did slide underneath them. Which is good. Let's just get these pivots. in place now. Come on you, behave. Uh, it's popped out. Okay, that's better. There we go. That's that alarm escape. We'll pivot in. There we go. There we go, that's better. Just had to get the, um, get this spring up where it's meant to be. And that's where it's meant to be. That's unwound. Okay. That's good. Because as I mentioned, this bell doesn't come off, which completely changes the geometry, I suppose, from the older one that I rebuilt in a previous video. So anyway, let's put these back on. So that it doesn't come apart. Now that all those parts are in, what we should be able to do is secure this um, alarm section. I just need to put a little bit of oil on here. So I just need to keep pushing on that. There we go, that's it. So that's in place. This is through. That's it. It was just caught up on the slot for the part that I'm about to put in, which is this. And it needs to be engaged in the slot like so. And then we just need to, make sure it stays engaged with the slot. And just 
get it up over there just so it's not caught on the edge of the plate and now oh, come on don't come out that's it okay so this can slide back and forth on this shaft now which is what enables and disables the alarm so you can see that it engages directly with the clapper and so when it's out the clapper can um, can ring but if I push it in and I'll just hold it in and just wind the spring again it can't ring okay so that's that so we've got most of these pieces are in now so what I'm going to do now is oil the clock and first thing I'm going to do is I've got some of this uh, Mobius 8200 which is a mainspring grease and I'm going to I'm going to use it to oil these um, these springs just like so just put some like that So it is a mainspring grease, this is what it's intended for, but the data says it can be used for uh, pretty much any application where you need grease, like sliding parts is where you use grease, parts that slide against one another. So if you think about how this spring works, that's exactly what happens. The parts slide against one another and you don't want them to bind up so uh, especially if you had say a clock or a watch that was left in the wound position and let's say for some reason it wasn't running so it was left wound then you've got all of the um, all of these coils pressing against one another and not moving so potentially they could bind up to one another. So um, this oil, this grease stops that from happening. All of the pivots need to be oiled as well. So for these large ones, I'm just going to do this with the super lube. This one will screw on. Felt like there was something going on with the threads before. No, it doesn't feel like it wants to. Oh, there it is. There we go. Threads being difficult. All right. So because I haven't got the um, because I haven't got the pallet fork in, the watch will just unwind, but that's okay. Because we can use this to test that everything is right as well. All right. And so I'm also going to oil all of the pivot holes and I'm just using um, 
super loop for this just using an oiler these are your cheap virgin oilers they're not very expensive at all So yeah, I just oil all the pivot holes. And then we need to do the ones on this side. So I want some oil on this thing as well. Because I'm going to be using it soon. Uh, what else can we do? Okay, I think we've, oh hang on, just up here, that one, and uh, there's one hiding right underneath the spring, right under there. There we go. Then I can just sort of mop up the excess. Especially around you know, like these big ones, see how much excess oil there is there. That's because I sort of used the, I sprayed the super lube on there. Okay, looking good. Okay, so the next step will be to put the pallet fork in. Um, so it's just still winding down a little bit, but that's easily fixed just with my finger. And so this is going to go here. Ugh, come on, behave. need to slip this pivot in uh, this nuts gonna have to come out I think I'm trying to avoid as all the other pivots coming out okay it's in are the others still in yes they are Uh, 
Okay, so now if I were to put some wind back into the clock, it won't be able to turn anymore. But if I do this, you can see the escape wheel advancing. So that's perfect. So I'm just going to just put some oil on these pivots so I don't forget. One there, one there, all right, so, now in order to, um, make this thing run, there's one very important ingredient that we need, and that is Yon Balance. So, to get that in there, just see how free this feels, because I'm going to use this adjustment. Oh yeah, that feels pretty good actually. Yeah, that feels good. See how much I've got. So I want to adjust this to the point where there is just a little bit of slack. Just a little bit of up and down travel. All right, I'm not gonna oil it just now. I'm going to get this hairspring installed. And to do that, I'm gonna put it in a vise. All right, so I'm hoping having it in this vise will make it a whole lot easier because I can access exactly what I need to access. So the, the pin that engages with the pallet fork I can just see that that engages. Now, the first thing is, is that the hairspring needs to be through this um, adjustment slot. like that. Okay, so if I get that back out of the way. Right, so I'm not sure if you can see this little shoulder that's resting just against the slot. That shoulder, the top of that shoulder is where it was sitting in the slot. Stop that. Um, if you saw the other clock that I rebuilt, it didn't have that. Now, I actually think that the end of the hairspring had been broken off. Which is why it ran too fast. So, now this, the the long, the wide part of the wedge goes to the bottom. Because like the thin end, a thin end of the wedge is a thick end, if that makes any sense, probably not, but. Looking good, now is that secure? Oh yeah, that feels tight.
see how the hairspring is lying? It looks absolutely beautiful. This is working perfectly. See how it's not distorting the shape of the hairspring as this moves back and forward? That's how it's supposed to be. Now, it was not like that on the other clock. So, if I make sure I've got some wind in it, and now if I do this, it should run. Look at that. It's running. Absolutely lovely. These things are, pardon the pun, they're like clockwork in motion. They are clockwork in motion, but they're, you know, they're so simple, these, these Smith's clocks, compared to a, um, you know, a, um, a wristwatch. And they had to be because, you know, they, they sell these things for a whole lot less than what a wristwatch would cost. So, you know, use stamped parts where you can, um, really built to a cost, but you know, that's, that's running beautifully. So I just need to oil the, um, oil the balance. And we're gonna do that like this. That's that one. And this one. Yes, beautiful. Can just see it drinking up that oil. Oops, I missed that time. Yeah. Uh, I think that one missed as well. Okay, that should be all right. Okay, lovely. It's a few bits where we've got excess or where we want to, it's always good practice, I think, and to get rid of that. Yeah, I am convinced the reason why this clock was not running was just simply due to lack of lubrication. It looked really, really dry rather than being gummed up. Um, the springs might have been a little bit gummed up, but I think it was just really, really dry. So we've got a couple of things we just need to do. Oh, now we've got one slight. Okay, do you spot the slightly catastrophic problem? The end of this spring is not where it's meant to be. It's meant to be around this post and um, tucked in behind itself, if that makes any sense. And I can't actually do that while there's power in the spring. So, um, you know what? I think the easiest way to resolve that problem is just going to be to let the thing wind down and hopefully it'll wind down enough that there'll be enough slack that this can be poked back where it's meant to be. So I'm just going to let it wind down and see what happens and comes back. And if it doesn't wind down enough, then I'll come up with a plan B to fix that problem. But we're almost done. Uh, so once that's resolved, I can put the last bit of the clock back together. But fantastic, it's running nicely. Get my screwdriver. Pull this out here. Then push that there. Done. Okay, so now we just need to put this piece in, which goes here. One, two.
Okay, so this can sort of flap up like that. So, I'll just give these a bit of a tweak. Oh, that's interesting, it's stopped. It's alright, we can fix that. So I think... I tightened this plate down and it stopped. I think the problem is that there's just a little bit too much tightness just on here. So if we back this off. Oh, it's still quite tight. Okay, that's better. Make sure the alarm works. There we go, it's pretty good. Okay, that all seems okay. Just checking the motion work and alarm wheels sort of seem to be as they should. So, what we need to do now is refit the face. Now you remember that I could not get the hour hand to come off. So there's one slight trick here. Um, how are we going to do this? I need the alarm to be on. And I'll just put some oil on here. Add some oil on here. Uh, let's see if we can get this. Right. So what we need to do is get this little alarm hand on, pointing to the same place that the hour hand is because the alarm is currently going off. So we'll want the 
minute hand to be on the hour. Set it to 12, move the hands to 12. Probably should wind them clockwise, I suppose. It'd probably be a good idea. Not bad. Bit of a blow. Just gonna give this a go with some poly watch and see what happens. I've never used this stuff before in my life, so we'll see if it can help to kind of make this look nicer. -er. Well, I'm not sure that the poly watch achieved that much. It's quite scratched up, but um, anyway. Doesn't matter. Put this in. Yeah, there's definitely something wrong with this shaft. I'd say at some point it has been cross-threaded. So it's just a bit tricky to get this started on the correct set of threads. There it goes. Okay, let's set this to uh, six will do. There we go. Fantastic. It seems to work. So there we go. I'm going to have to leave it running a while just to see how I'm going in terms of time accuracy, but um, 
yeah, this clock seems to be running as it should, so I, I think I have learned a fair bit on that. It's the second one of these that I've done. So I think the next step for me will be to move on to a watch now rather than a clock. And, and yeah, that'll be the next step in my watchmaking journey. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up and I look forward to reading your comments and I'll see you on the next video and watch out.